Hello everyone, and welcome back to another round of Let's Make Hybrid. The current prompt is a bear and a plant, and this is of course part two, so if you haven't seen part one, I really would recommend you go and check that one out first. And, as always, let's dive straight in. So for our very first one, by just now, we have a carnivorous plant and bear hybrid. I really like the jaw, and especially the long vine-like tail, how it kind of just whips around it, it just gives like a very much a surreal feel, which really complements the overall colour scheme as well, since everything does just look very ghostly, very surreal, and the lack of eyes, I have to say, really ties it together, and it does make it look very, very creepy. And following just now, we have Savannah Dragon 0221 with their Polar Bear and Rock Foil Hybrid, also known as the Saxifrage. I really like the texturing on this one, I especially just love the way that the tail and the underlegs have been done with all the leaves. We've been seeing a fair few leaf tail designs, but it's really cool to see this one more of a, kind of like a fern or more like multiple different leaves to create the tail as opposed to just one large one. I also really like the additional flower petals, I think that one's quite new as well, especially around the head, the bottom of the jaw and the shoulders, and I really like all the leafy textures going along the body as well. And next up we've got the Spirit Bear by Jen and Pothier. This one really gives me a bit of a World of Warcraft, kind of like an Earthsock and Earthsock vibe, of just a great big Spirit Bear Guardian, and it's really cool. I think the way that it's kind of the perching on a cliff and waterfall is absolutely perfect because obviously you've got all the trees and such and trees really make it feel like it's a really large creature but the way it's perching on a cliff as opposed to you know just like standing out in the open or lying on the floor in a cliff it just feels like it's really a part of the world and i think it looks really really cool and it's a very interesting dynamic we also have a second submission by jenna Pothier of a red panda and this one, I think it's adorable. It's a, it's a really sweet contrast compared to her first one. So the first one's a great big giant protector. And the second one's this really cute, more docile looking creature. I really like the plants and berries that are lapping around the neck and the back of the arms. <laughs> the little twigs are an interesting choice as well. And I just really like the overall shading and colouring texture too. And following Jenna is Sommy with the claimed bear. And she's included this very cool poem, which I have to admit is kind of hard to follow. So bear with me here, but it's really, really cool. It aimlessly drags through the thicket of thorns, leaving its stench of sweet roses perhaps more. It leans and groans on its shaky legs. On the border of life and undead, its skull is claimed by bright white floral leaves. It straggles and circles in its own head as it drags itself through the darkened weeds on the border of life and undead. That is really, really cool. And I think that the design itself is just incredibly unique. The head alone, just the petals on the head and the skull, really looks like it could be a very legit tribal tattoo. And I think that looks really amazing. I've always been a big fan of those kind of tattoo designs. But just the whole thing in general, just the way it all comes comes together, especially around the ribs, I find the ribs in particular just really fascinating because it just really kind of sells such a floral vibe in a way, kind of like the spines of a colorous plant's teeth or the thorns on a rose, it just really reminds me of that, not to mention just all the segments on the arms, and a bit of fluff as well, again, just really adds to it. This is so dark, so moody, so powerful, and I think it's really, really cool. And next up we have Nick. Once there was a beast whose steps would shake the world, whose growl would rattle your bones. Unrivaled in its ability to hunt, it was an apex predator to dominate all of nature. Now sealed away in twisting knots of wood, it stands as shelter for frail, a forgotten threat. It really makes me wonder then just how this creature originally looked. It looks really, really cool. I really just love the twisting knots of the wood, especially around, like, you can really see around the face, but a little bit around where I would imagine the paws or the belly would be. It's also interesting as well to see, like, a bit of fruit and the nest of eggs as well, because it kind of gives, like, a bit of a, an almost symbiotic resurrection of life. Since Nick mentioned about how this creature was, you know, such a great big scary predator, it kind of makes sense that as it passes, you see more life cropping around it, and it's just really cool. Like, another one that's just got, like, a lot of meaning to it. And next up, I blew the fairy, we have the flower bear. I really like the little crown. There's something about that, I just think it looks adorable. I also just really like the very gentle-looking face. And just as I was about to compliment the flowers, I think I see the bear stepping on a car and some people. That took a turn. And next up by Arcanine, we've got the Venus Flytrap, an Oak Tree, and the Impala Lily Hybrids. A very cool combination, and I really love just the way it's all entwined together here. I really like the idea of using branches as antlers, and I also just really like the big flowery mane. Not to mention the overall texture of the creature's face, and how all the fur just has like a bit of a leafy texture. I think it comes together really nicely. And next up is a spore creation by Maver. On the left is the more photoshopped version, and on the right is the original that you can expect to see in-game without mods. And as Maver says, in Finnish mythology, Otto Otto Contio and Metzen Kanungus, the king of the forest, and Metzen the honey palm, are some of the many rarely uttered circumlocutory 
epithet of the spirit that never that was never directly named. Something akin to not saying the true name of a god. So this is a bear god given form by the silver birch, a natural tree of Finland, limbs and leaves. That's really cool, and I probably butchered so much of that name, I apologise. But I do think that's a really cool concept though, just like kind of entwining a bit of, um, you know, like folklore mythology into this. And I think the overall design does look really cool. The Photoshop variant is very, very interesting. It definitely gives it like a bit more of a sinister appearance. But we look at the creation on the right, I just really like the constant use of like the various bone parts, the keratin horns, also the skull pieces on the travel editor really embedded into all the creature editor parts, and all the moss as well going around the main, the bag, and the arms and legs. I think this really comes together very nicely and it's a very impressive use of different parts of the editors. And next up by Caliber Light we have this collection of a bunch of flowery bears and looking at the one on the bottom left hand corner how it's chilling with the wizard really gives me the idea that this is like a very gentle giant. I think it looks lovely and I think this really sold the whole gentle vibe of the face as well. The face does look very sweet. All the butterflies, all the pixies and various creatures as well hovering around it is such a nice touch and I also like the different variations of the tree and tree stumps growing on its back. Following Calibre Light, we have Polar Mo with a mossy bamboo panda, which is a very sweet looking piece. I really like the colouring technique used for all the black spotches on the panda. It gives it like such a more mottled kind of appearance. And I really like the addition of the bamboo around the ears. It kind of reminds me of the Pandaren from World of Warcraft, and it just really gives me like a very kind of peaceful, relaxed, almost monk-like vibe. And next up, we have this really awesome looking polar bear spirit, I want to say, by Ghost Nico. I love, love, love the antlers. They are such an interesting, unique touch, and they just really sell the overall, what I can only assume, is a much more mythical vibe. I also really like the tree trunk as well, but also how the tree trunk not only entwines all the way to the paws and the claws, which is already a neat touch, but also how they're somewhat frozen as well. The whole thing just looks really epic. Very, very large and powerful, and again, like the antlers just really sell it. Not to mention, by the way, all the stars in the sky, I think there may even be constellations, I'm not sure. But the attention to detail in the sky, I just want to compliment, it's also really good. And next up, we had the Crimson Eucalypt Drop Bear by Hazilla, a ravenous variant of the usually docile koala, something something about coniferous eucalyptus trees and yada yada symbiotic relationships. <laughs> nice. But it's a very cool idea though, and I do appreciate the reference of a drop bear from a Australian, <laughs> which is really fitting. Not to mention the design itself just looks really cool. It kind of reminds me of certain variants of Wendigos, which is really interesting. If we look in the back as well, I just love all the various detailing on the bag, all the different leaves overlapping each other, the big thorns as well, as Hazela said, for camouflage and defense and whatnot. This I can imagine being a probably about a cat-sized, maybe dog-sized creature, and I can imagine it being actually quite terrifying. I can also just imagine it just like leaping out at you and the idea of that is terrifying. And next up we have Orchid, the Forest Goddess by Ixeris. I really like what, I'm not sure if it's a mane or a gown, but I really like the feature that kind of drapes over the bear. As in the right image, it really does give like a bit of a almost protected by cloak kind of vibe and it just seems like a bit more royal. Especially the flowers around the head as well, again just really sell that more royal vibe. And also the addition of all the construction lines on the forearms as well give it like a bit of a wooden texture which I think is a very nice touch. And next up by Rabina Dragon we have the Blackberry. I really really love the texture on this. This kind of makes me think of like a very old school, like a really really old school traditional painting of a concept and this is the kind of thing I can imagine being like in a very old encyclopedia. It looks great, the texture, the coloration, the shadows, everything about it. Not to mention the concept itself, it's very unique. A little bit terrifying but really really cool. I think that they're just the individual heads, they're just so beautifully textured and it just really really sells the idea perfectly. Not to mention all the thorns on the body as well, it's again like just a really nice touch. I think this one comes together fantastically and Rubina has done an absolutely incredible job executing her idea. Really amazing work. And next up by Lunar Eclipse we have a collection of sketches. As I mentioned they're having a bit of an art block which is entirely understandable. I'm looking at the images on the right hand side and as I go downwards I can just see like a tree attacking a deer which I gotta say is kind of a, a terrifying idea but very very cool as well. I especially like the idea on the top right where the tree is like entangling all of its various roots into the bear. I think there's just the texture and line work on that looks really cool. And I also like the different variations that Luna has added as well, such as the Ursus Malus, the Ursus Aster, and the Ursus Stenatophrum. And next up we have a Bamboo Panda by Terros. This is an interesting one. I'm not sure if it's a colour or maybe the big dark eyes, which of course pandas normally have. Something about this one feels almost quite sombre. A little bit 
sad, I want to say, and I'm just not sure if that's intended or not, but I think it's really interesting to be able to convey that emotion regardless through art. It almost kind of feels like that the panda is passing away and becoming one with nature again. I'm not sure, maybe it's a bit morbid of me to interpret that, but like I said, it's just a really interesting design, and it's really quite thought-provoking. And following Tyros, we have Dropkick Murphy of their submission. I really like the large flower on the top of the bear's head and the way that the roots entwine around the ribs is a very interesting touch. And I also just really like the very mossy underneath of the creature, as it makes me imagine it's some kind of swamp creature that could be like slowly wading through the waters with all the moss and roots dangling beneath it. And next up by Sereg, we've got the Polar Bear and Bird of Paradise Hybrid. Certainly an interesting creation. I do like the addition of all the orange thorns going down the back and spine, and the big leafy ears are quite cute as well. And I like the choice of textures as well. Next up is the Flytrap Bear by Dinosaur Awesome Dude. This is a Flytrap Bear, it is immobile so it cannot move. It can eat both its bear mouth and its Flytrap mouth. It is about the size of a grizzly bear and can easily kill things that come too close. It's really interesting to see this creature as being immobile, therefore it cannot move. And what I imagine looking at it is as if it was rearing up on its back legs or roots in this case, like a grizzly bear kind of goes back on its back legs. I can imagine it is sort of maybe even staying frozen, pretending it's a wood carving only to then, you know, really strike out the creature ahead of it. It's definitely a very interesting concept, and I can imagine, you know, the whole being a mobile thing having some very interesting repercussions, as well as inspiration for a couple of predatory ideas. And next up we have Cool Crow with their Malayan Sundu Picture Bear. This is a style I have not seen in a very long time, and I cannot remember the name of it. I think it's technically a collage. But I just think it looks really cool, and it gives me some serious nostalgia just looking at it. But I also just really like the general idea itself, and the way it's been executed. I really love just all the thorns and nettles going along the arms and legs. I can imagine that being a little bit painstaking to cut out and glue individually, but I think it really paid off. I also like the thorns going down the belly as well. And just the patterning around the chest, like the big white half moon shape, the red collar, and also the back of the head as well. Just, just again, really cool. And saying that, actually, the back of the head, I really like just the choice of whatever texture that is, because it just gives this really cool mottled appearance. And I think, I just think the whole thing is such an interesting idea. And I think that Crow's done an absolutely fantastic job. Really, really well done. And next up by Theo, we've got the bear plant and blueberry bush, which is another interesting combination of ideas. I just really love the little berry on the bear plant's tail. Something about that is just really, really adorable. I can imagine it using it as perhaps bait, like an anglerfish would. And the blueberry bush as well is very interesting. I kind of wonder if there is a face on the top there or just a collection of berries itself. But again, it's a very cute idea. And next up, we have another one by Somi, which is a far less cute idea. <laughs> the incredible bear melon, the snack that bites back. This is just wonderful. There's not really much I can say about it other than it's just fantastic. Very, very funny. Typical Somi, <laughs> and it's brilliant. Thank you for including this in this. And next up, we've got a more humanoid piece by Frozen. I really like this. The addition of a skull for this head instead of a regular bear head just suddenly gives it a much more sinister vibe. It having this skull head really makes me think of like some kind of wicked creature or a being made from a ritual or some kind of corrupted amalgamation. I'm not sure, but it just really gives me some very, very sinister vibes, especially with all the parts kind of growing out of it as well. It just feels a little bit out of control, a little bit feral. And I just think it looks really, really cool and almost like an omen of death or something to protect the forest. I'm not sure, but again, I just think it looks really interesting. And next up, we have The Great Tree Bear by Matty Dino. I really, really love the way that the roots entwine on the creature. I just think that the roots in particular here are just very, very detailed and just says so much for the creature itself. Saying that, I also like all the different trees accompanying it, but the roots, man, it's the roots that just really sell it to me and I think that they've really gone above and beyond for the design of it. Not to mention a very nice and scenic environment as well that doesn't detract too much away from it, but really complements it. And next up by Zeppelin King is, I think, a Jungle Book reference. I'm not entirely sure. You sure you want to be here? The jungle comes alive at night, my dear. <laughs> it's a very interesting idea. I really like all the leafy appendages coming off the arms and what I think is the tail behind it as well. I also just like the coloration, just the way it's got a, like a bit of a much darker, kind of almost a bluish brown mixed in with the mossy green. It's just a really nice touch. In addition to the white mane and those piercing amber eyes. And next up by Vinesh, we have the Ivy Bear. The textures on this really, really sell it. The leaves are a really nice touch. I just love how Vinish has added in just all these different overlapping parts of leaves. And the face as well is probably one of the better bear faces I've seen in Spore. 
I also really like just the soulless green eyes. I think it adds a lot to the whole elemental nature. But the texture, the texture just really, really sells it. It's really not often that you find a color palette in Spore that actually has the leaf parts complement the rest of it. Because normally the leaf parts just look very kind of artificial. But in this case, Vinash really made it work and it just looks really nice and consistent. And following Vinash, we've got Dread Drago with what I think is based on the succulent. This is really, really lovely. I love the colors. I would not have expected to see like a more rainbow kind of design, but this is beautiful. It's really, really beautiful. As always, I just love the construction. Drag Drago just has such a really cool technique in, gen in general when it comes to like all the musculature, all the different features, the way that certain limbs and such kind of meet at the joints. It's just such a cool idea. And that in conjunction with all the different colors as well just looks really, really beautiful. And this in a desert environment as well is really, really cool. Like again, just gives us such a nice contrast from the creature against the environment. It all just comes together, just looking so bright, so vivid, really strong and beautifully executed. This is a badass concept. And next up by Data Tricky Data 5, we have this really cool piece. I love the mushrooms. I don't think we've actually had any fungal ideas. This is definitely a first. And not only that, but it gives me like a bit of a bioluminescent vibe as well, which is really cool. And I do like the addition as well of the more autumn colored trees at the top there. But that in conjunction with like all the bright green moss and especially just like all the bioluminescent mushrooms is a really interesting touch. Not to mention the way that the patterning on the face differs as well. And next up, we have the Venus Pitcher Fantailed Bear by Abyssicarus, also known as the Ursus Foliocarnivorus. This is really cool and pretty intimidating. The face is terrifying in a really good way. The addition of the very large, almost pelican-like throat, very unsettling, and I think it fits it wonderfully. Also, just all the thorns on the back as well, just again, like, really nail in that more sinister theme. And the big fan tail as well, it's a very interesting touch, and I think it just makes it stand out a bit more. And next up by Alisbill, we have the water bear and the power plant. This is a next to zero maintenance pet, and so it's a better battery than an electric mouse. <laughs> I think the idea itself is really cool. I gotta say, a water bear. I'm surprised I didn't see this coming. Of course, we'll do a water bear, but I do think it looks really cool though. It's very interesting. The little phone next to it is an interesting touch as well, but I actually just really like the way that Ale's done this. I really like his choice of shading. And the technique is used for it. it has a combination of gradients and actual line shades also i just think the little flower head for the face is also just really fitting and just suits it very very well plus little leaves on the back as well a really nice touch and next up we have this very moody looking one by cherish i just love all the texture on this one this one's very very texture and technique heavy whether it's the fur on the bear itself the big glowing eyes all the red flowers and the branches on its back or even just the flowers in the foreground this is really cool, and as I said, just very, very moody. I think it looks really, really beautiful, and definitely just the gaze, it's very piercing. The color palette as well is also really nice. I do like how the color palette doesn't actually have any black. It's got a lot of shadows and a lot of darkness, but not really any black, and it just, again, gives me a bit more of a moody appearance as opposed to just something dark and evil, and I just think that's much more invoking. And following Cherish, we have another one by Taroj, with this really interesting looking one, the Polo Extravaganza. The petals is fascinating. That is really, really creative. I absolutely love the way that the head of the flower looks. We've seen so many submissions where it's a bear infused with plant parts. I don't think we've seen any that's a plant infused with bear parts. And Taraj has got like such an awesome idea. And <laughs> just noticed in the upper right hand corner the addition of the reindeer chicken. That's <laughs> really, really cute. But yeah, I just I just love the head of it. I think the head just looks so unique. And that is a really, really interesting just idea in general. And next up by Draculady, we've got the teddy bear reclaimed by a nature. As Draki says, I know it technically isn't a true hybrid, but the idea of nature growing from the stuffed animal is too much fun for me to not do. The plant I based on was a common wild Dutch clover. Another really cool and moody one. Granted, yeah, it's not a hybrid, but again, it just really takes inspiration from the idea, and that's what I want, it's for people to feel inspired and just go ahead of any ideas that they have inspiration for. This is just really interesting. Love the texture on the moss. I also just really love the clovers themselves, which is really cool. The whole thing just like, got a bit of a, a bit of a somber vibe, and it's another one that's just very thought-provoking, and I just think it looks really cool. Also, just all the little white specks as well. Can I give it like, a bit of a lonely vibe? As I imagine, those would be the only things moving in this, and something about that just feels quite lonely. And next up, by Zeppelin King, we've got a second submission, which is a short-faced bear coming to life with black roses and other flowers. 
this is creepy and really, really cool. The eyes in particular are very creepy, but again, I think it's very, very well done. And I love Zeppelin's techniques on the various different plants. While very grim, I do think is also unusually colorful and just really cool. And next up at Clover Sage, we have this really gorgeous looking traditional design. I just love all the textural leaves all along the back. I also really like the, oh, I don't know what the name of it, like a bit of a fern, like very long, thin, leafy branch coming out from under the eyes. I think it's just a really, really cool touch. I also just love all the butterflies as well, hovering around it, gives it like just much more peaceful vibe. And I just think the whole thing comes together looking really, really nice. And next up by Delicious One is their Bear Venus Flytrap Hybrids. I love the idea on this one. I really, really like the teeth. I think the shading and gradients on the teeth are absolutely fantastic. It just gives it a lot of depth, a lot of 3D feel. But I really, really love the fuzz. Just all the fuzz everywhere, especially on the foreground as well. It makes the creature feel like it's camouflaged into it. I think it just looks really striking and a very, very good job. And next up we have another mile with that Guardian Bear. Looking like a tree turned into a bear, with light shining from under the bark of its skin, the guardian bear is known for its affinity of nature, and can be recognised with a very powerful, glowing and healing moss growing on its back. It protects the forest it lives in by chasing away anyone who would dare destroy its territory, would it be to hunt or collect resources. It is also told the guardian can regrow a whole forest by hibernating into even desert soil for 100 years. When it wakes up, it is to defend its land from strong destructive forces like fire or disease, or against some very unfortunate hunters. The guardian bear can also be summoned by drawing its symbol into the ground and reciting a prayer to its creator, the goddess of life, Gaia. This is beautiful. It's a really cool concept. And all I can really say is I just love all the various gold markings, especially around the face, but also around the arms and the idea of the glowing moss as well. This is, for the lack of a better word, just simply beautiful. I think the color choices as well are very striking and really adds a lot to the character. And next up, we got a bonus submission by one of Anonymous friends, Devil on a Rainbow. <laughs> this is really, really cute. I love the little addition of the butterfly in the nose. I just think it just looks absolutely adorable. But I also just love the whole cactus feel to it, especially around the paws and the ears. Plus all the subtle little features, such as the sparkling in the eyes and all the little tiny thorns growing from it. I think this is really cute. And next up, we have Zeppelin King with our final submission, which is of the gummy bear grapes. <laughs> very, very interesting idea. So this is a really cool and interesting idea. Another one where it's more of a plant with a bit of bear feature. If you look on the bottom left hand corner and you look carefully you can just see like how all the little berries are actually little gummy bears and I think it's just such a really cool and cute idea. And following Zeppelin King we have Maven with another spore creation of their Polar Posy. <laughs> I really do love the way that Maven just intertwines these creations into like these little environments and scenes like this. It just gives them so much life and I also just really like the creature itself. I think it's very very creative. The way he's used those uh, spiky cat-like ears as the petals of the plant and it just gives like a bit of extra texture in conjunction with the little fluffy rotten ball part and the actual leafy parts. I think that is really cool. <laughs> Not to mention it's just a really cute idea itself and kind of mesmerizing just seeing like an entire field of them. And following Maver is Dragon's Hoons to Eats with their first submission of the Birch Bear. I must say the texture of the trunks on the birches are actually very very well done, really sells it perfectly. I also like how they've given like a bit of a unicorn horn, if you will, as opposed to antlers. That's just an interesting different touch, plus its gentle face, and I think the overall autumn feel just really makes it stand out. And next up we have Star Watcher Sky with their Floral Frost Bear. Absolutely loving just all the texture and colours on this one. The colours themselves are absolutely beautiful, we've got like quite a variety here. But also just the way that each of the individual parts are textured, especially the ice, but also a bit around the more floral parts as well. It just looks really, really beautiful and very, very striking. The lighting, gradients and colours are really, really great, especially around the eye as well. But I do think it's the ice that really gets me. The antlers, the snout, the teeth and the underbelly. I think Star Watcher Sky has done an absolutely fantastic job at executing that style. And the addition of the frozen parts as well, can I just say, is also just very unique. Next up, we have the Floratherium by Dino Chris. The Floratherium is a large, bear-like creature that bears a strong resemblance to various plant species such as rose bushes, cactus, and trees. It kills its prey by either stabbing them with their large, pointy claws or by smooshing its victims by rolling on top of them. It has a prickly neck and head, its body and tongue is covered in thorns, and has hard, robust limbs covered in tree bark. That's a really unique idea. The image on the bottom right hand corner actually kind of reminds me of a bit of a combination between Rajin and Devil Joe. I love the way that the head is designed and also just the way that the kind of spine curves as well. It just really gives like this vibe of a massive, heavy, formidable creature. And also just the addition of how it smushes its victims. Very fitting, a very nice touch. I just think this looks absolutely awesome. Also on the bottom left hand corner, you can see like a bit of the idea of the tongue and that is terrifying to imagine that licking you. 
Again, really, really cool work. And next up, I'm glad to be chilling. We have a pea shooter from Plants vs Zombies and a bear. This is absolutely adorable. Now, I look at it, so actually, I think it's adorable. But then I look at the face, I look at the nose, and I realize it's actually a big open mouth, isn't it? If I remember the pea shooter correctly. And that does suddenly make it quite terrifying. But the overall design now, I do think the overall design, just execution, is really, really cute. I really like the paws, actually. We've been seeing a whole manner of different ideas for like just paws and claws in general with these. But I don't think we've ever actually seen any that are actually leaves. And that is just a really interesting touch. I also just love the coloration, and I also want to point out the blue shadows is also just a very nice touch. And next up, we got a bit of a bonus one by Fridgemaster27, in extension to their original submission in the first part, with the caption, Come to me with open arms. I gotta say, that is very sinister. And that about wraps it up for today, friends. Thank you all very, very much for watching, and for everyone just taking part. That was an absolutely incredible variety of pieces. Really exciting, and I think you've all done such an absolutely fantastic job. Now, for the next hybrid. I've had to think quite a bit about this one. I thought I've been having quite a few rather tricky ideas. I wanted to go with one that was a little bit more within reach of people, and I really hope this is one that you may like. So for the next one, the next hybrid is going to be a shark and a lizard. Really looking forward to seeing how that one pans out. And as always, if you want to submit your own artworks to this, you absolutely can. Just by posting either on my Discord server, you can email me directly, you can post it on the YouTube comment section, or you can message me on Twitter and DeviantArt. Wherever you can reach me, you can submit your own pieces and be included in the next video. As always, everyone, thank you all so much for taking part. I'm really excited to see what you have in store for me next week. And as always, have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you all next time. Cheers.